Cops of Reddit, what has so far been the creepiest call you've ever had to respond to and what happened? From my post 8 months ago. Got a call for a missing child. Got to the home to find the mother highly distressed. And not sure what to do. I called in everyone to first search the home and property. I decided to search the backyard since it was a large wooded lot with no visible fence. After about 10 minutes I found the boy. He was caught on an old chain link fence in the woods that was blocked by a bunch of trees. So you couldn't see it from the house. He had basically gotten strangled to death on the fence. He must have been climbing on it. Fell. And got his hooded sweatshirt caught on it. The worst part for me was having to call it in on the radio. Knowing the mother might hear it inside from one of the other officers radio. It was a stormy night on the Oregon coast. A lady was driving drunk and ran into the back of a parked school bus. When she did, her car caught on fire, but she was able to escape. When I found her slowly walking down a side street, I was telling her to stop and turn around. When she turned around, her lower jaw was gone, and she was totally dazed. Her tongue was sticking straight out the top of her neck, and she was trying to talk. She ended up surviving but needed tons of plastic surgery. Working third shift on Halloween night, I'm out by one of our smaller lakes just outside the city limits. Kids love to go out and drink, which is surrounded by some very nice houses. Going through the neighborhood each of the roads ends at a small two-lane road that surrounds the lake. I'm slowing to the stop sign and already starting to look to my right to make the turn when my headlights start tracing the rock wall that surrounds the lake I catch something out of the corner of my eye in one of the large trees that dots the walk path. I back up to see what it was and I see a guy hanging. At first I thought it was a Halloween decoration. The neighborhood is really into decorating for every holiday. So I stop. Get out and as soon as my flashlight hits him I realize. Nope. No decoration. He dead. As I'm standing there getting ready to call it in. I notice a gaggle of kids coming down the street trick or treating. It. As soon as they see my car they start heading my way faster so I book it back up the block to meet the pair and walk in with them and tell her she needs to take the long way around the block the other way. She can see it on my face I'm not kidding. Turns out he was a 20 year old that was devastated about his girlfriend breaking up with him and she lived in the last house on that block where she would see him the next morning when she looked out her window. We responded to a burglary alarm at a mortuary and found that one of the rear doors was left open. Policy now dictates that the entire building needs to be cleared, searched, to confirm that it was a false alarm, which most are. It's the middle of the night and totally dark. We use flashlights and never turn on lights. We walk into one of the rooms and see a body on a table. It appeared that it was waiting to be processed, possibly embalmed, by the mortician. It smelled like a mildly decomposing body. Suddenly I see a shadow to my right and I shine my light there and find nothing out of the ordinary. I immediately smell a really strong whiff of perfume blow by me. The search was completed more expeditiously than normal after that. Nothing was found. My uncle was a sergeant and had to be called several times out to a house for domestic abuse. This older guy had some young 18 year old he would pay for the guy to swallow certain objects like paper clips and human hair. The kid would poop it out into a bag and the older guy would sift through the fesses like a goddamn treasure hunt for the items. He would then put them in an envelope and file them. Edit. The domestic abuse had nothing to do with the poo treasure hunt. I don't think it's illegal. Just super creepy. Not a cop. But a correctional officer in Texas. One time a guy slit the forearm side of his elbows. Where it bends. He laid there in a big puddle of his own blood. I was one of the responders that day. I'll never forget it. As soon as you entered the cell. The smell just hit you. Blood has a strong metallic smell. Which I never realized before. He'd been laying there a while. So the blood had coagulated which again. I did not expect. As we lifted the barely conscious guy out of the blood. The blood fell off his body in chunks. Like jello. It was pretty disturbing because I didn't expect any of it nor was I able to mentally prepare for it. We're not really medically trained. So all of it was completely surprising to me. Got a call that someone wasn't answering their phone or the doorbell. We got to the house and noticed that every window was blinded by either curtains or pieces of paper. We rang the doorbell and yelled through the letterbox but there was no answer. We opened the door and got inside. In the house it looked like someone just had lunch. 
There was bread on the table and juice or milk in the glasses. Children's toys scattered all around. Then I saw a note that gave me the chills. It was a suicide note. As the door was locked from the inside, the person had to be in the house. We checked room by room and my heartbeat was at 300% when I checked the bathroom. Preparing myself for slit wrists or throats I opened the door slowly. But there was nothing. Finally one more room left which was the attic. We walked slowly up the stairs and we found the resident there. Hanging from a beam. I will never forget the adrenaline I had. The scene in the living room or the resident I found. I responded to a report of an unresponsive infant. When I arrived. All the family members were standing around casually in the front yard pointing into the house. I found the baby in the back room laying on her back on a bare mattress. I started CPR, but realized the baby was probably already deceased. We rushed her out to the arriving ambulance hoping they had a way to bring her back. I learned she was the mother's second suspicious Sid's death, and I had her other children removed from her care. The difficult part was when I left the scene and went to the ER to see what came of the situation. As I walked in and asked where she was, the ER nurse walked over to me and handed me the deceased baby swaddled in a blanket and told me to wait for someone to show me to the morgue. So I'm standing there in the ER in uniform holding what everyone thinks is a live infant, but rather, an infant corpse. And several people stop by wanting to see her and commenting on how cute it is to see an officer holding a baby. I just smiled, but it killed me inside. I was ushered back to the morgue after what felt like an eternity and told I had to wait with the baby until the medical examiner arrived. They took the blankets off and laid her on a stainless steel gurney and left me alone with her again. I lounged around the morgue for about an hour waiting. By the time I got home several hours after the end of my shift, because this call came out 15 minutes before the end of my 10 hours shift, I laid down on my bed and cried for a long time. My young daughter was in daycare, and my wife at work. I really needed to hold both of them. So the house felt incredibly empty. My daughter was only slightly older than the infant. And when I was looking at her earlier, I kept seeing my own daughter. I didn't get any sleep at all before going back in for the next shift later that night. My father-in-law is sitting beside me so I asked him. He is a retired sheriff and was a deputy before that. He was the first responder to an accident. A truckload of farm workers were coming back from the fields. The truck went over a hump in an interception and a little girl in the back of the truck flew out and landed head first on the pavement. My Phil held her as she moaned and eventually died in his arms. He says he still hears her sounds in his head all these years later. Not a cop myself but my dad is and I asked him this one time. He told me it was when he went to this one house because a woman had called and said that men were breaking into the house. He gets there and he said it was immediately very clear that the woman was not exactly altogether mentally. He said she kept mumbling things and was very jumpy and skittish. Not to mention that every single wall of her house apparently had at least 6 or 7 crosses on it, if not more. He calms her down, checks around the house for any signs of entry or just anything weird and there's absolutely nothing that would indicate that anyone had been trying to or had been successful in breaking in. He said she followed him around the entire time and would point to things, like a doorknob or window latches, and say oh that's not where I left it, that's how they got in. He said the whole thing was fairly eerie, considering he was at this woman's house in the middle of the night, surrounded by crosses and listening to her mumble on about random it, to make her feel better. He did a sweep of the whole house to see if there was anyone else inside, which there wasn't. He said the one thing that made it creepy for him was the fact that every few minutes she'd say something like oh they're here again, or he's right behind us, I can feel it. My cousin is a cop and he responded to a call on Valentine's Day night. A 12 year old girl called in to say her mother had blown her brains out in the living room. I guess her and her brother were getting ready for dinner and the mom just shot herself. He said the creepy thing about it was dinner all set up. Drinks on the table and suddenly she shot herself. Kids were sitting outside when he arrived. To this day I can't imagine Valentine's Day for them. But I know that is something that stuck with him seeing that. Got a report of a missing husband. He told his wife and family of six children that he was going to get his tires changed. But never returned. And this was 12 hours ago. They had purchased another house in a neighboring community. And the relationship with the wife was under pressure. So the wife assumed he was staying at the other house. 
and claimed he would never kill himself. The strange thing about this report though was that he emptied his personal bank account into his wife's this morning as well. The wife explained this off saying that they recently had a fight about finances. And he agreed that he was bad at money and maybe they should just have a joint account that she controls. On a hunch. I asked his 14 year old boy if there were any areas in the mountains nearby that his father enjoyed going. And the son identified a road about 10 miles away. It was nearing midnight. But I decided to drive to the top of this old and abandoned forest service road. As I drove through the snow and started to climb the road, I felt a gut feeling that I would 100% find this guy up there either thinking about or already acted out a suicide. The snow laid gravel road had some sign of travel, but no real indication of how fresh the vehicle tracks could be. As I reached the top of the road after an hour of travel I was honestly surprised that I did not find his black truck. I spent the drive back down thinking about gut feelings and how they are unreliable, but that I somehow felt different about this one. As I traveled up the road, I did notice over a dozen smaller roads branching off, but they were not mapped, and I had already spent too much time on a single occurrence in a busy city with too few police officers. Nonetheless, I decided to check a single of these secondary roads, and about 3 stroke 4s of the way down I picked a road at random to check. And sure enough my headlights lit up the back end of a black truck about 100 yards past the first corner. Even if I hadn't memorized the license plate beforehand, I wouldn't have had to run it. It was clearly his. I radioed that I had found the truck, parked my vehicle, and traveled the 20 feet to his truck with my heart beating like I was doing it at a sprint rather than a normal walk. What I found inside was a mess of brains and blood caused by a self-inflicted shotgun wound under the chin. I'll save you from the description. There was just something about that gut feeling while traveling this abandoned and quiet mountain road, followed by a sense of being tricked by the gut feeling, then finding out it was true by discovering such a gruesome scene, having to wait 3 hours next to his truck waiting for body removal, and then to end it all by having to go to the family who was expecting good news to deliver to them the worst news possible. That makes me feel creeped out to this day. Two adults reported missing. Parents of two adult children. One male. One female. Alerts are in place for the missing people's credit cards. The father's credit card hits on a purchase at a jewelry store where an engagement ring was purchased. It led us to the son who made the purchase of the ring. Son is questioned and confessed to killing both parents and burying them in shallow graves. The son led us to the grave site and we began the process of recovery. Both mom and dad had black garbage bags over their heads being held in place by duct tape around their necks. The sight of the bodies, especially their faces once the bags were removed and the smell is something I'll never forget. Are we accepting not me but a cop I know stories? My cousin is on in a major city. Apparently 911 got a call from a 6 year old claiming vehemently that there was a zombie outside of his house on the street. So a patrol car swings around to see what's up. Turns out a tweaker on meth gouged out his own eyes, had blood dripping down from the empty sockets, and was stumbling around blindly with his hands stretched out in front of him. Goddamn. Turns out the kid was telling the truth. This may be quite tame compared to other posts, but so far it's the creepiest for myself. An elderly woman had called in reporting that a man carrying a drawstring bag was walking around her and her husband's property. She described the man as walking like a zombie and was looking down towards the ground the entire time. She wasn't able to tell if the man was attempting to break in or not. My partner and I were about 15 minutes away when the call came in from dispatch. When we were about halfway there, the elderly woman had reported that her husband, who was downstairs watching the front yard with shotgun in hand by the front door, told her that he watched the trespasser disappear into a cornfield that was across the street from their house. My partner and I quickly searched the area around the cornfield then went to the house. As I took down some information from both the husband and wife, my partner searched the property for any signs of tampering but found nothing. We then patrolled the area for a good 10 or so minutes hoping to find the man but didn't. UK got called to assist ambulance at an address because they were struggling with a woman who'd had an apparent seizure. We got there and she's this tiny skinny little Singaporean lady who's being held down on the floor by a paramedic. She's hissing and struggling against her and repeatedly trying to bite the paramedic. 
Her eyes are all black and red, no white. It takes me, 200 LB, my partner for the evening, 180 LB, plus 3 paramedics to hold her down. All the time she's struggling and trying to bite with veins popping out of her neck. She's looking past us at the corner of the room screaming at something that isn't there telling it not to kill her and us. Her husband, who seems weirdly unfazed by the whole thing, tells us this has been happening since she last went to Singapore and got sick after visiting a holy site. Usually her sister has to stop it by putting this powder on her forehead in a cross but unfortunately she's out of the country. In the end she was taken to hospital for a mental health assessment by the paramedics. I often wonder what the outcome was but have no way of finding out unfortunately. Not me but my cousin. He got a call one night that two brothers, ages 4 and 6, were found dead in a near empty swimming pool. There was like 6-8 inches of water in the pool and the call came from their dad. They never could charge the man but it is widely believed that he killed his two sons. Edit. Grandma. I got a call that there was an abandoned truck on the highway. I was only a mile or two away. So I headed there. It was in the middle of these curves, with a mountain wall on one side and a drop off to a creek on the other side. It was dark. Probably around midnight. I pull up and there it is. An old 50s pickup truck. Light blue. Sitting there. I have no backup. I have no idea where the driver is. I walk up. Gun out. Inhaling the strong alcohol vapors. No one to be found. I call for a tow truck. Meanwhile I have to wait. In the dark. In the middle of blind curves with no idea where the driver is or why he left it. My adrenaline was at an all time high for sure. I stopped a 25 year old Asian male from entering the east executive entrance of the White House. He had slit his wrists and neck prior to his arrival, but not deep enough to hit major blood vessels. He told me that he was a secret agent working for J. Edgar Hoover and that he was 60 years old. He said he had important information to pass to President Obama. I ended up having to detain him stop the bleeding and then involuntarily commit him. Turned out to be a local college kid, going through some mental health issues. I've field interviewed hundreds of White House callers but this kid took the cake. Not a cop but my dad's friend is and got totally hammered at our house a few days ago and told us about one of his first rough calls was a little girl who had came to school with hair missing from her head and apparently her dad abused her and ripped it from her head. Who knows how and why. And so police got involved and when the parents didn't come to school they went to the house and found the mom so badly bloodied and with both eyes so swollen she couldn't see out of them. Her daughter couldn't even recognize her. Dad had apparently not wanted her to go to school because he knew teachers would get suspicious but mom sent her anyways. He woke up in the morning and found out she had sent her and just went up on her. Dad had locked himself in his room upstairs Ducker jumped out the window and made it pretty far. Until he ran into a K9 unit and tried to make a run for it and the K9 tore his legs to shreds. Never been so happy to hear the arsehole got what he deserved. Not a happy ending for the girl though. Date. While this blew up a bit, my little sister goes to school with a girl and there was assemblies at school to raise awareness for domestic and child abuse. She is still in care of her mom and it turns out she's pretty normal. It's just that her dad and evolved into deep alcoholism and is pleading guilty for several different charges. I once went to a two fatality car crash. The cars had collided head on in a 55 mile per hour zone. One of the drivers had left the house suicidal. And it was surmised that he picked a car out at random and went straight into it. I had spoken with that man several weeks prior and seeing his skeleton in the burned up car was a little creepy. I won't describe the rest of the scene. But the worst part of it is. This was Christmas day. Not a merry Christmas at all. Detention officer at a local jail here. We had a guy get brought in about 2am one night who we immediately knew was about to give us a fun time based on the way he was moving. Quickly snapping the head back and forth. Looking all over the room. Etc. One of my co-workers and I stay with the booking officer to help her out when the it inevitably hits the fan. The guy keeps rambling on throughout the whole process. Parts of his speech are understandable but most of it is gibberish. At one point he looks up at my co-worker and says. Would you blame me for it? Trying to keep the guy calm. My co-worker tells him. Nah, man. No one can blame you. For whatever reason this set the guy off. He leaps off the bench and we both push him back down. 
My co-worker is trying to get handcuffs on his other wrist. He was already handcuffed by one hand to the bench. And I'm holding him against the wall with every bit of strength I have. This methodica was strong. I swear the bench was about to come up off the concrete when he first leapt at us. As my co-worker gets handcuffs on him. We take a step back. The guy throws his head back. Eyes rolled all the way back. And lets out an inhuman scream that I've only heard in movies about demon possession. He then moves his head as if he's looking around the room. But still with his eyes rolled into the back of his head and spouts off more nonsense. I'm not catholic but I was very tempted to cross myself. The screaming. Head throwing back and eye rolling continue on for about 45 minutes. Every so often he'd come back to reality and talk to us like a normal person for a moment and then go back into crazy mode. From a post I made a few weeks ago. I was called out to negotiate with a 17 year old female who had barricaded herself in a bathroom with multiple knives and scissors, she'd done it right too. SWAT ended up going through the sheetrock wall. She wouldn't talk with me at all but had multiple graphic conversations with her mother, who committed suicide 3 years earlier, and her dad, who's serving lots of years in prison for sexually abusing her. When SWAT pulled her out she had completed multiple circumcisions on herself with the scissors completely cut her nipples off, and had sodomized herself multiple times with multiple steak knives. The kicker was, she was talking the whole time and her tone or volume never changed. The pain never bothered her, or, more likely, she never felt it. The human mind is scary as duck. My dad worked in a precinct with one of highest crime rates in Mick. I think it had the highest murder rate during his years on the job. Anyway, he won't tell us stories about what he's seen because they are mostly horrific and still give him nightmares almost 15 years off the job. However, I do remember he told us one story when he was really drunk. A woman in her 20s walked into her apartment building late from work one night and was waiting for the elevator. It opened, and the only person in there was a creepy looking guy, though apprehensive. She got in and pressed her floor number, but noticed that the basement button was pressed. Normally after 9pm maintenance would lock the basement button to prevent random people from going down there and ducking with it. I guess someone forgot to lock it. The creepy guy ended up taking her down there, tying her up, and raping and torturing her for hours. He then took her apartment key, went up to the floor she'd pressed when she'd first gotten into the elevator, tried every door until he found hers, and took her roommate, also a woman in her 20s into the basement where he continued torturing and raping both of them until dawn. Maintenance found them that morning. And my dad was a responder. Again. My dad never told us stories. This one might have stuck out because he has four daughters. But I think it's gotta be up there in creepy factor. Man this was probably 2010. 2011. I was really new. Call came I'm as an unknown problem. Basically the 911 was so tucked up, even dispatch didn't know what to call it. Turned it this guy had just murdered his stepfather and then walked to his grandparents house to kill them as well. He stabbed his grandmother through the eye with a Rambo style bowie knife. One that had the compass in the pummel of the handle. He missed her brain by about an eighth of an inch. So she did not die. Instead she came running out of the house when we got there. Knife sticking out of her ducking eye. And the compass was spinning around because she was moving. My brain literally went that's not real and I went past her. Along with several other cops. Before the sergeant was like what in the actual duck are you guys doing? She survived. We caught the guy in a stroke of pure luck. Elderly woman with a massive hunting knife for an eye. Definitely the creepiest thing I can remember seeing. Military police officer. So I worked both law enforcement and corrections for a bit. In corrections the main office was also the police services desk. Often it would ring and no one would be at the other end. Anyways one time it rang and instead of a number it had a descriptor that I don't remember exactly. Something like emergency phone 11. I was new and immediately called my superiors about it. They told me to drop it and never report anything like that again. Ominous right? Anyways the reason I told that is to tell this. Some time later, on patrol I got dispatched to essentially an abandoned side of the base to respond to an emergency phone call. 
No location at first because radio didn't know where emergency phone 11 was and was new to the base so he didn't get the same memo to not report those calls. Radio then went on to say that the caller had sounded frantic and thought they were being chased. Meaning that someone had actually been on the other end. Radio eventually digs up some old maps that label a emergency radio 11 location and relays them to me and my partner so we drive there in a hurry. There is no phone. Just a broken pole where one had once been. That was a fun one to report. Went to a welfare check. A neighbor called and he hasn't seen this guy for a few days and the lights have been on for a while. I go and look around and find no footprints or tire marks in the snow. Recent storm. I check the garage and nothing. I check the house which was unlocked and found the guy's cell phone. Keys. Wallet and cash with the TV on. That's when I realized this was now a dead body search. I looked everywhere in and outside the house and around the garage. There were several old junk vehicles on the property but again. No tire marks or shoe prints or anything. I call all recent numbers on his phone and no one's heard from him. Only so much I can do so I issue a ball and we start getting sick paperwork ready. Next day the day shift officer goes over to follow up. Turns out. The guy was plowing his driveway and either had a medical condition or something and either passed out or died on the spot and crashed the truck onto the other junk cars. Which then caught on fire. Edit. Investigation leads to the fact this happens a week before I got this call. Leaving only a pile of bones in the front seat covered in snow. I felt like it for not finding him that night but it was really creepy knowing his remains were inches away from where I was searching. A guy was at a park masturbating at around 10pm at night. And I was the first to respond. Called another unit to help me. Saying he was resisting arrest. Which he was. And I made the other unit arrest him. We wore gloves. Thank god. Not a cop. But my college friend told me he walked in on an odd crackhead that had microwaved her own newborn daughter. My department sends an officer to all rescue calls if one is available. We got a call late one night to assist rescue at a townhouse complex for a woman hemorrhaging. We didn't show up until rescue had already left with the patient. So we let ourselves into the residence and eventually found the bathroom. Which was covered in blood. Blood on the walls. All over the toilet. Everywhere. Crazy amount of blood. Rescue hadn't mentioned anything suspicious on the radio. So this was surprising. We were preparing to leave when one of the younger officers noticed bloody footprints leading to the front door. And then across the parking lot. To a dumpster. We gathered at the dumpster. Lifted up the top. And lit up the interior with our flashlights. Same officer extended his baton. Reached into the dumpster with it. And brought out a bloody plastic grocery bag dart with a dead baby in it. True story. One night at about 1130. This guy jumps off of a bridge into a bay. On the way down. He hits a guard rail and loses both forearms in the top of his head. One set of officers found his arms and set them aside. I was on the dive team. So we go collect his remains. While we check on his condition. We notice the brain is missing. This was me flipping up his scalp and taking a peek inside to find nothing there. It's very strange to look for something very important and not find it. Anyway. We bag him up and get him on the boat. Our supervisor tells us we have to at least look for his brains. Gross. So we dive and look around. But the only thing we find is a piece of skull. And we had decided if we did find it. None of us wanted to grab it. Grandmother's story. Retired homicide detective. Couple call police because they are missing their baby. Grandmother and partner show up to investigate the house. It's just the husband. Wife. Newborn and dog that reportedly live there. Husband is angry and wife is visibly shook. Understandable. They are missing their child. My grandmother's partner find bits of blood near crib. As well as more blood near the doghouse outside. After pressing the couple. Mainly the wife. They come to find out that in a fit of rage from not getting any sleep from the baby crying. Husband picks the newborn up and smacks him against the wall repeatedly until the baby stops crying. They didn't know what to do so they fed the now bludgeoned baby to their German shepherd. My grandma has seen some it. I was working in the crime unit. Acker detective. 
for the state police agency I work for and patrol got sent to one of the small towns in the county I worked in for a report from neighbors in a series of row home apartments that there was an unbearable smell coming from a second floor apt. Patrol made entry and found the subject deceased from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. On the way there, the coroner calls me. She ran with the local M's crew and was on scene with the first responding trooper and said bring your hazmat suit this is a bad one. I got there and I could smell it from the street. I went upstairs and as I passed the wave of flies I entered his bedroom. What I saw really couldn't be described as human. It was in the middle July 90 degree heat and the dude was black as a black cat. When I got close I noticed something odd. He had melted to the floor. A female forensic service girl said too. Why is his skin moving? Yup. Thousands of maggots were now under his skin which gave it the appearance that his skin was bubbling and moving. And yes. The gun was pried still to his right hand. It took the fire department ducking shovels to scrape this guy off the floor. Not to mention the smell. Trust me. I have been to swamp bodies. Lake bodies. Heat bloat but nothing like this. Crazy it we see sometimes.